Okay, so in the last video we talked about how to essentially just plot vector fields by hand just by basically choosing a bunch of random points around the origin and then just basically calculating what the scalar components on each of those vectors was and then just drawing the vectors by hand. So we found it, it, it's so useful when you choose um, just a, a few points around the origin really and you just kind of see what the pattern is. So, so we tested this function here we had 2x and a half of y and then the other vector field we drew was x squared y and then y squared so we, we actually found out that it looked a little bit like this now when you plot vector fields on a computer program they, they tend not to look like this because uh, computer programs have this tendency to scale down the vectors so that it looks a little bit nicer so you won't see this kind of overlap that we saw here when we drew it by hand but in, in essence, what we're interested in with the vector field is just to see how the how the magnitude of the field increases, how it is how it scales as you move away from a specific point, and then just to see what the generic direction is. So what I'm going to do in this video is I'm going to show you how to use Octave, which is just a free open source clone of MATLAB. You can use the MATLAB as well. The the code is essentially the same, and I'm just going to run you through some of the commands here. So here in the in the first two lines, you have a comment here, you're calling this program plotting vector fields in two dimensions. And then here I just have a bunch of commands. So this is just to close all my images, um, close the command prompt, and just clear all the stuff from the memory just every time I run the program so that my whole um, screen doesn't get cluttered with graphs and so on because every time I run the program new graphs are generated so this kind of just get, gets rid of all that stuff here I have defined two vectors so basically these vectors are the axis so this goes from minus 10 to 10 in intervals of 2 so we're gonna have a step size of 2 and same in the y direction so this is just to define the axis and the limits of those here I have x and y, so basically I'm making a matrix and then creating two new matrices, x, big X and big Y. And to do that I'm using mesh grid. So mesh grid is a command that turns two input vectors into two matrices that can be used to essentially just plot three-dimensional functions or in our case to plot a vector field. So what we need to do now once we have defined that is to define the vector field in terms of its components. So for example, I have three functions here that I want to plot at the same time. So what I have done is, well, I have created, I call them one, two, and three. This one I have the, the horizontal component is X and the vertical component is Y. So then to generate the figure on the vector field, what you do is use the command quiver, which generates a plot of arrows or, or a velocity field, which is essentially just a vector field. And then the first two inputs are just the matrices with your coordinates. And then your F, uh, next two inputs are just going to be the values of that vector field. So X component, Y component, and so forth. So just to show you what that one looks like, this is the vector field we looked at in the first video where we had X, Y. And basically you can see here that the same effect is observed. You have nothing at the origin, but you have a vector field that increases radially from the origin so the further away you get the longer the vectors get because the magnitudes are larger and you can see that the directions are all basically just radially outwards from the origin so this is the vector field we looked at in the first video what you'll notice though is that because of the automatic scaling so that you don't see any overlapping vectors the lengths are actually scaled down so for example if you're plotting a vector here at the point say minus 10 and then something like minus 8 here you would expect this vector to actually be quite long it would be uh, it would be minus 8 units so 8 units to the left on the x-axis and 10 units down and that and the total length would just be the the hypotenuse of that triangle but in, in this case everything is scaled down so you can see the vectors but in general what we want to do with a vector field when we're visualizing it it's just to get an idea of how the, the strength of the field is, in, is increasing or decreasing uh, with respect to a specific point and then just to see how the direction changes at, at each point on the grid. So that's the first function. For the second function what I did was basically grab this vector field 
that I have here so 2x half of y so it is this one that we drew here and basically those are the two inputs I gave to function quiver so now in this particular case what I have is this thing so you notice this is similar to what we drew by hand but you notice that the vectors are now a lot shorter because of the automatic scaling built into the program so you can't really see much of an increase but you notice that you have your vectors and they get longer as you move away but it, it sort of looks compressed along the y direction so so this is um, one of those functions so basically the, the reason is that you're increasing uh, along the x-axis a lot faster than you're increasing along the y-axis due to this um, the, there's a proportion between the two so the x the increase in x is a lot larger than in y and then for the final function I just did the one that I have here so basically this vector field that we did in the last video and you notice that I'm using uh, a dot and then this uh, hat kind of symbol here and then dot asterisk the reason for that is that when you deal with matrices in Octave and MATLAB if you're doing an element-wise operation, which is what is the case here, you're multiplying element by element on those two matrices, you need to use this dot in front of the operator. Otherwise, it thinks that you're just doing a matrix operation, which is not what we want. So we have x squared times y, and then we have y squared here. So we put those two in here, and then the vector field we get from that is this. So if I go back to the original one, you notice that we had this kind of thing, and we said that there was essentially no vectors along the x-directions. So there was an interface in which the vector fields would actually collide with each other. This one would be going this way, this one would be going that way. So essentially at this interface, they would cancel each other out. And that is precisely what is happening here. You notice that along the x-direction, so when y is zero, you have no vectors there. And then you notice that if you move a little bit up and then a little bit down, then what you can see is that this vector field is actually going like this, and then it is actually going like that as well. So basically, it just goes up like that, and then it keeps going up, but then it goes down again. So it's, it's a kind of a, a strange shape to deal with. If I were to draw it, it will look a little bit like this. And then down here below the x-axis we have the same kind of situation but happening in the in the in the opposite direction so we have the vector field coming in this way and then it goes up and then it goes to the left like that so it keeps doing that kind of thing so what does this all mean well what you can think of is um, a vector field represents things like velocity field so if you were to put a if you imagine that this is a moving fluid like um, air or water or something like that if you were to place a particle somewhere here then what would happen is that particle would just follow the same the same field so basically it would be pushed around and they would follow the same kind of uh, streamline uh, if you put it over here then it would just go like that if you put it right in the middle here it would just go straight up and keep um, going up all the way if you put it here, it would actually go up, but you will notice that it would actually come to a stop here because the, the velocity is decreasing along this direction, so it would actually stop at this point. So basically the same thing happens here, it would come to a stop. If you put it here, it would go like this, and there is a small chance that it would actually continue going this way. But as you move farther away, this basically this thing is going to become more common. So depending on where you put the particle, it's just going to try to follow the overall field around it is just mo going to move it around and this happens a lot in both fluids and electromagnetic fields so those are some things that we're going to look at later on but this is just to give you a general idea of what, how to plot fields now the only drawback of doing it on a computer is that the step size actually changes the quality of the field so if I decrease the step size you might think the resolution is going to get better but what ends up happening is your pro is going to draw a lot more vectors so this one looks quite nice because it's essentially just going radi uh, radially out outwards but then you notice that for these ones you can't really tell much about the, the, the arrows because they have been scaled down but yeah in general the quality gets better so you can see the vector field um, much more clearly for example in this one you can see more details so now you can see how the field actually changes around those points so if we make it even smaller well, at this point, I believe it would probably get a little bit too small to see. Let's see how that goes. Well, you can still see it, and 
you can see it's quite good it, it gives you a good idea of how the field is changing you can also see the second one which is the one that looks compressed in the x direction but it almost looks like these are moving horizontally at this point which is not really what's happening but it, it is just going like that and then the third one well you see you notice this kind of thing so in general drawing vector fields on the computer is actually quite useful and, and you can see what this whole thing is just coming from although you, you will see these little patches here which are a little bit to distinguish from from the rest of the field but it might just be a proper field maybe it's canceling out those points or something like that but yeah this is basically how you use Optif and MATLAB to plot vector fields and hopefully this has given you a better idea of doing it both by hand and then on the computer about to what vector fields are and hopefully this will give you give you better intuition for when it comes to actually using them to describe physical phenomena.